What is going on YouTube? Hayden back. Although things in America are pretty bad, I feel like it's times like this when we should really take a step back and see how others are doing. Like the question is, are we the only ones suffering? As far as the media makes it seems, it's just the US and Ukraine that are having economical problems, right? But what if I told you we as Americans actually have a pretty good, unlike some other countries. In today's video, I'd like to compare our economy to the rest of the world, comparing Americans' travel problems, food problems, gas problems, as well as inflation problems, and even economical problems with the rest of the globe. So the question still remains, does the US really have it that bad, or could it be a lot worse? So guys, with high inflation still rampant at 8.6% in America, and the Fed still attempting to bring it back down, it leaves everyone wondering how will the next CPI reports turn out? Literally, every economist is hoping to see lower inflation for June so that the stock market can find its footing. Unfortunately, with kids out of school, summer is now now in full effect. And you know what else is still in full effect? Smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This actually lets YouTube and I know that you want to see more videos like this. And this is so YouTube can recommend these videos out to other people with similar interests. But back to what I was saying, with school out for the summer, this means it's going to be extremely difficult for the feds to slow down consumer demand and traveling, which is vital for lowering inflation levels. In the US, TSA officers said they screened about two and a half million people at airport security checkpoints nationwide on Friday, also a uh, Father's Day weekend, which was the highest checkpoint volume since November 28th of 2021, the Sunday after Thanksgiving. And that was also about 100,000 more travelers than the Friday before Memorial Day weekend. And listen, as happy as I am to be able to travel again after the lockdown, people just don't realize how critical it is now to stop spending money. You see, the more people travel, the further stress they are adding to the supply chain, thus driving prices up even higher. And this surge in flyers really couldn't have come at a worse time either for U.S. airlines. A combination of staff shortages mixed with jet fuel prices and infrastructure challenges have left major carriers struggling to keep up with the surge in travel. I believe nearly 9,000 flights were delayed and another 3,200 flights were canceled between Friday and Sunday of Father's Day weekend. Delta Airlines alone canceled at least 248 flights on Sunday, United Airlines canceled 90, and American Airlines canceled around 96 flights. May alone, the average ticket prices soared to all-time highs, and it's only getting worse. In May, airfares in the U.S. soared 37.8% compared to a year ago, and on a month-to-month -month comparison, airfares were up 12.6% in May after rising 18.6% in April and 10.7% in March. So probably best to start planning alternative ways of travel for the holidays this year. This means traveling for this year's biggest holidays like July 4th, Thanksgiving, and even Christmas will most likely be even more expensive when it comes comes to ticket pricing, and even worse when it comes to delays and cancellations. It will also be really a true test on how well our economy is doing. But even then, I'd still much rather have high ticket prices than not to be allowed to travel at all. Shanghai is still under lockdown, and seven districts will temporarily be locked down to flatten the curve, and forcing millions of people to stay inside as their housing compounds get sealed closed from the outside. And if you thought that was bad, Britain had its largest railway strike in three decades, halting trains across the country, throwing travel plans for tens of millions of Britons and visitors into chaos, and setting off what union and government leaders warned could be a long summer of labor unrest. Similar to America, as the cost of living soars, Britain workers started demanding raises at their workplace, not getting the answers they wanted, riots and strikes actually started to break out. This sounds quite a lot like the US, where 1,300 Southwest pilots protested about pay, and Delta pilots protesting in Grand Central Station. Now guys, Britain's inflation rate also hit a new 40-year high of 9.1% in May from one year ago, as Russia's war in Ukraine drove food and fuel prices even higher. Now the Bank of England even says inflation could hit as high as 11% in October when a cap on domestic energy bills is raised. And if you think 11% inflation is bad, Turkey's annual inflation this year in May rose 73%, its highest level in 24 years. And among the most affected sectors were transportation, where prices rose 107.6% year on year. Crazy enough, Turkey's central bank is even refusing to raise interest rates despite inflation, keeping them unchanged for over five months now. Now let's take a look at food prices. You see the cost of food rose 10.1% in the US, with food in the at-home category rising 11.9%. This is the highest increase since April of 1979. And on a 12-month basis, meats, 
poultry, fish, eggs, led to basically a spike of 14.2%. Now this leap was followed by the other food at home categories, including dairy and related products, which were up 11.8% with milk specifically up 15.9%. We also had the largest pork processor in the world closed down in Vernon, California. Not only that, 18 food processing plants in the US caught on fire this year in Georgia, I believe Nebraska, Iowa, Ohio, and a few other states. Now, trust me, I don't like spending $5 a carton for eggs just as much as anyone else, but things are a lot worse in other countries, which is scary considering how bad we currently have it. In Britain specifically, a quarter of citizens have resorted to skipping meals as inflationary pressures and a worsening food crisis conflate in what the Bank of England is recently calling an apocalyptic outlook for consumers. Prices of manufacturers paid for domestic food materials is up 10.3%, while imported food costs, which account for almost half of Britain's consumptions, were up 20.5% higher, the largest rise since December of 2008. Specifically, things like pasta are up 50%, and bread is up 16%, among other things. And to add on top of the world food crisis, India also just banned wheat exports a couple days ago, and this is just days after saying it was targeting record shipment this year. They're now saying the ban on wheat exports is caused by a massive heat wave that's moving through India. India is the world's second largest producer of wheat, which is not good news for the supply chain as it could drive up global prices. And worst of all, Turkey's food costs skyrocketed by 91.6%, and we thought we had it bad. Now our next topic will be economic problems. Now even though the first quarter GDP in the US isn't all that great and we are actually down by a percentage, we still managed to climb by 0.5% in April, unlike some other countries. For example, in the UK, their GDP declined by 0.3% in April, with services, production, and construction all shrinking. Not only that, the UK is set to be one of the slowest growing countries on the G20, right above Russia, making 0% progress this year. And for comparison, the US isn't doing really much better either, only up 1.2%. And for those curious as to what actually the G20 is, it's basically the leading forum for global financial issues, whose members include major developed countries and developing economies. It's basically showing who's had the best performing economy in order of countries. Now in the UK, the British pound has also plummeted, falling to its lowest level against the dollar since the pandemic in 2020. And at the same time, the Russian ruble hit its strongest level in seven years, despite the sanctions put on them from other countries. And crazy enough, their currency is worth more now than it was before the war with Ukraine and before the US cut ties with Russia. Isn't that shocking? Russia's currency tanked almost immediately after they went to war with Ukraine. And in response, Russia more than doubled the country's key interest rate to a whopping 20% from a prior 9.5%. And since then, the currency's value has improved to the point that it's lowered its interest rate three times to reach 11% in late May. Now, the Russian ruble has actually gotten so strong that Russia's central bank is actively taking measures to try to weaken it, fearing that this may make the country's exports less competitive. Now, remember that chart I showed you for the G20? There's a reason why Saudi Arabia is at the top of the list, and it's a similar reason as to why Russia's currency is also booming. You see, Saudi Arabia's economy also grew at the fastest pace in more than a decade in the first quarter. Their GDP rose by 9.6% year on year, and that's the highest figure since the third quarter of 2011, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. Now you see, Russia is the world's largest exporter of gas and the second largest exporter of oil. And believe it or not, its primary customer is the European Union, which surprisingly has been buying billions of dollars worth of Russian energy per week while simultaneously trying to punish it with sanctions. And even though Russia's currency is up, this is separate from how their overall economy is doing. Russia's Ministry of Economy said in mid-May that it expects unemployment to hit nearly 7% this year, and that a return to 2021 levels is unlikely until 2025 at the earliest. Since Russia's war in Ukraine began, thousands of international companies have exited Russia, leaving huge numbers of unemployed Russians in their wake. Foreign investment has even taken a massive hit, and poverty nearly doubled in just the first five weeks of the war alone. So it goes without saying that their currency is not a good reference for economic growth, and that's what brings us to our next topic, which is oil and gas. Now, before we get into this topic, just remember in the US, gas hit a record high of $5 a gallon, but in some states like California, gas is almost $10 a gallon. Fuel oil, which you burn in your house, is also up 
0.7%. The US has even cut ties with Russia from buying gas and oil, which honestly was just a mere 3% of our imports. But we've also since increased purchasing from other distributors like Canada and Mexico. Now here's what's crazy, what's really an eye opener, is somehow I thought gas was only affecting us in the US, but boy was I wrong. Natural gas in Germany is up, listen to this, 300% from last year, and crude oil is up 77% from last year. A gas station in Germany was even charging 22 euros or 23 US dollars, even though gas can typically be found for about $7.50. So I'm really just having a hard time wrapping my head around this. Germany even declared themselves in a gas crisis since Russia cut their gas lines to Europe. Just a few days ago, Russia's state gas company, Gas Gazprom slashed flows through the Nord Stream 1 pipeline to Germany by 60% last week. Germany is now in the second phase of a three-phase gas emergency program, which means they have resorted to firing back up their coal stations. Germany is now desperately looking for other solutions, and the U.S. wants to help, but unfortunately, we're stuck dealing with a major gas refinery in Texas that just so happened to blow up. I have no idea. This just seems like a lot of major consumer needs like gas and uh, food seem to be catching on fire recently. Now, moving on from Germany, gas in Hong Kong and Norway is over $10 a gallon. And in France, it's about $8 a gallon. So all in all, hopefully after watching today's episode, you can appreciate our current living conditions because I I know I am and hopefully we can you know get back to a normal level soon because I can speak for everyone in that this kind of sucks. Obviously, I'm not happy with spending 30% more on everything that I need while all my investments are tanking down 20% in a bear market. And for those people in Germany and Turkey and anywhere that is also having a hard time with inflation like us here in America, I really do wish you a speedy recovery. Otherwise, guys, that's it for today's episode. If you guys like what you saw, definitely make sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any important updates. Otherwise, guys, have a good one and I'll see you in the next video.